So I'm here in St Breville's with David Rees and I'm going to be asking him some questions about his call to ordination. So first of all David, tell me about your understanding of vocation. Well uh, it goes back to when I was a teenager at Sunday school in the 60s when our priest talked about vocation. He asked me if I knew the meaning of the Latin voca to call and he went on to explain what vocation really meant. I, while I was still at school, I went and joined the Chester Diocesan Fellowship of Vocation, where we explored vocation at a couple of Easter break meetings. And it obviously worked because one boy told me that he wanted to be a farmer. I went then to study chemistry, which was also a calling I felt I had. And um, after that, I was desperate to do BSO. I applied and was accepted. And I spent two years in Sierra Leone in West Africa where I met lots of Christian missionaries, some of whom were very good and very influential and others scared the pants off me. I came back then and did a, a course in forensic science and spent for most of my working life working in the forensic science service. Forensic science is based on a simple principle that when two bodies come into contact, each leaves a trace on the other. And on reflection, there are an awful lot of people who had an influence on me. And what about ministry? How did you first hear God's call to ministry? Well, as a teenager, I trained to be a server, and that was a transferable skill. And wherever I lived, I'd always been involved in the church, both as a server whenever invited to, and also in the, the, the wider life of the church. And here in St Breville, where I've lived for most of my life, 40 years, during that time I became a member of the local ministry team. I went on a course to lead worship, and I also became a pastoral assistant. But there was something not quite right. I still felt, for most of my life, I'd been like Jonah. I'd been hearing God and going in the opposite direction. And I really ought to be like Isaiah when the Lord says, Who can I send? And the answer is, Send me. And I thought the penny finally dropped and that would, being ordained would be that final step. So what steps did you take in following that call? Well, initially I, I went to CGH to do a course on the Christian faith and there I was mixing with people who were potentially going to be ordinaries. And while I was in my first year there, David sent me a form or the diocese were inviting applications to be ordained local ministers. I completed that, went through the interviews, wrote the essays and was accepted and recommended for ordination. I was ordained deacon last summer. So what is your understanding of ordination? Well, I, I always think of um, Peter's first letter where he talks about the Church of God being a royal priesthood in the sense that we're all called to priesthood and I see the role of the ordained priest as just being a small part of that. And uh, we're take, to take part in God's mission. It's not our mission, it's God's mission. And the five marks of mission which I studied and learnt at CGH were to preach the gospel to invite people to join the faith, to nurture those who've joined the faith, to fight injustice and to care for God's creation. And I see that the priest as being part of that wider mission. Rather like St Paul talks about the church being the body with Christ as a head, then we've all got our part to play. So having accepted God's call to ordination, what impact has that had on your life? Well, it's the impact and the culmination of all my life. As I've evolved as a Christian, then I, I'm just drawing it all together, really. I, I'm becoming more prayerful. I'm looking more at people as I ought to look at them, as they're people of God. And also to study the scripture more so I can be an informed and confident Christian as I try and proclaim the gospel. So let's go on inside now and ask David another question about his first year of ordination. David, you've now been ordained for a year. How has that been for you? It's like the window in the background which shows Jesus learning to be a carpenter. I have learned to be an ordained person. It's been a stranger because at the very start I was able to take part in our services, to take part in and, take, and conduct baptisms, even take a funeral. And then came lockdown. So I've had to learn new skills, how to communicate via Zoom and all the other fantastic things that we can do. But it's also learning to be the five things that the ordinal requires of us, that we are priests, and shepherds, stewards, sentinels, messengers, and 
servants, which is the one I probably find the most difficult. So David, you mentioned the five marks of mission. Which of those do you feel most passionate about? Well, they're all important. I'm very passionate about fighting injustice and caring for God's creation, both of which are asking us to be stewards of God's people and of his world. And as a chemist, I often talk about catalysts. A catalyst is something that induces a change without actually changing itself, so the analogy isn't quite true. But through change, we can change the world, both for the people and the environment. And hopefully we'll only change when we feel it's necessary to do so. And finally, David, is there anything you'd like to ask of the church family? That they will pray for me, as I will be praying for them, and that together we can be part of God's mission in this place. Thank you. So I'm here in the windmill field in Tuts Hill with Emma Durbin who's recently joined St Luke's congregation and is currently exploring a call to ordination. So Emma, we've been following this series about vocation. Could you share a little bit about how you've heard God's voice as you've sought his will for your life? Uh, I had an amazing experience of God when I was um, 15, 16, um, which changed my life. I remember a, a friend saying to me not very long after, uh, did you know that God actually wants to communicate with you? That for me was amazing news that, that this God who has just changed my life actually wants to talk to me. Also I had such a, a childlike faith, I kind of thought right well, let's put this to the test and um, just asked him things and asked for signs and lo and behold, yeah he did. It wasn't long after that that I really felt that God was calling me. I was so amazed and um, I just felt I needed or wanted to share uh, God with other people. So I went off uh, with um, a missionary organisation called OM and um, I kind of really was with them for uh, five to six years. That was yeah quite an amazing part of my, of my life. Um, at the stage, I'm a mum of four, um, and I've been a mum for the last 20 years, uh, and I'm still asking that question of God, what next? And what steps have you taken to explore that sense of what next? I work in, a, in two um, Church of England primary schools, and I work with children um, who are struggling for one reason and another. Something I've realised is that as much as I can offer these things, the greatest healer for them in their lives is, is Jesus. It's made me think and consider um, what I'm doing and where I want to be. And I've watched vicars come in, spend time with the children, and that's made me think and consider what I'm doing. I was challenged to go and speak to uh, my vicar who suggested that I then go to the cathedral and uh, do a, a course which was all about exploring um, ordination. I, I felt really nervous uh, about going but um, at the end of the meeting um, the, the guy who was leading the course said, you know, this, the beginning part of the process is just about exploring. Um, that for me was a kind of the greatest relief um, because for me it is all about exploring. I, at the moment I, I have no idea. And now Emma, you've started this journey of exploration. What impact has it had on your life? Well, as you probably have realised, we are in the windmill field in Tuts Hill. And um, this is where I or have come to walk the dogs for many, many a year and this is where I pray and um, I have to say I have been really praying a lot more and mindful and reflective. Um, I'm very aware of my inadequacies um, like all of us. <laughs> um, you know I really struggle with, um, I'm just a bit insecure and, and I've struggled with the whole thought of possible rejection, if, if it's a no, then I'm not good enough. I guess a bit like Peter, 
getting out of the boat uh, and walking on the water. It's It's been an act of, of faith, it's been scary, um, and I'm just having to keep going back to God um, and seeing my worth in Him and, and just accepting that if it's a no, it's a no, if it's a yes, it's a yes, and it's just God's timing and not my own. So Emma, looking to the future, what would you like to see God doing in and through you? I would love to see people just know Jesus and knowing belonging, um, knowing healing and just finding themselves um, and finding that grounding that I think everybody's searching for. If I could help people find that, then that would be amazing. And finally, Emma, um, what could the church family do for you? Um, I would really appreciate um, everyone's prayers. Uh, if I could just read this, um, it says, Whatever your age and stage, your season, this will inform and affect what you can do and where you can go for God. Some seasons will need all your effort and concentration to survive before you can even consider moving on. Other seasons may make you restless and curious about your future. Um, and I think that's pretty much where I am at the moment. So I'd appreciate prayers for whether or not it's a yes or a no. Thank you, Emma. Oh, welcome to St. Mary's Tidenham. I'm here with Nikki Bullivant, who's going to be commissioned later in this service as curate in this parish. And I'm going to ask her a few questions about her vocation and God's call on her life to ordination. So, Nikki. Could you tell us a little bit about your connection with this parish? Um, I've got a very, very long connection with the parish. I've lived here most of my life. I was born here. I moved away for a couple of years and then came back. My heart has always been here. Um, I was baptised in this font. My father was baptised in this font. And my grandparents were married in this church. Thank you. And you were due to be ordained today. Can you explain what's happened? Well, yes, because of coronavirus and social distancing, obviously the ordinations can't take place as planned in Gloucester Cathedral. But I'm going to be commissioned today anyway as a curate in this parish. And that is really, really exciting. And I've got the added bonus that I can look forward to my ordination, possibly in Gloucester Cathedral at the end of September. Thank you. Could you tell us now a bit about your journey of faith and God's call to ordination? Well, I became a Christian when I was 16 years old. Um, and I went off then after I finished school to Bible college. And then I had a real passion to follow in my grandmother's footsteps and become a nurse. So I went and did my nurse training. Unfortunately, during that time, I had a bit of a wobble in my faith and there were some wilderness years. But then I came back and fully immersed myself in church life. And there was this niggle that there was something more that wouldn't go away, that God was calling me to do something. And family and friends were saying, we can see you in a dog collar, Nikki. But I just let it percolate and I put it on the back burner because I just didn't want to look at it really in any depth at that time. That's really interesting. So at what point did you realise you couldn't really ignore these feelings any longer? Well, Janice, that would have been about four years ago when God seemed to be shouting even louder and shouting from even more directions. I had colleagues at work who said that they had no faith at all, but they felt that they could see me in a dog collar. And the final push came when Vicar David, who knew nothing about my arguments with God, said, Nikki, why don't you explore ordained ministry? And at that, I felt, well, actually, I have to give it a go. Thank you. So could you explain more fully God's call on your life to be ordained? Well, Janice, for me, it's all about the Eucharist. I've seen the difference that the Eucharist can make when people are sick and are dying, and also the impact that it has on their family and friends, and also absolution and blessing. So in order for me to fulfil all that I feel God is calling me to do, I need to be ordained. Thank you, Nikki. Having heard and accepted the call, therefore, what impact did that have on you? Well, initially, Janice, there was that sense of relaxation and relief. Oh, my goodness me, yeah, this is what I was meant to be doing. And it's a whole kind of joyful experience. But there's also that issue of giving stuff over to God and trusting in him. So it's a dual thing, really. There's joy, there's excitement, there's the way, hey, but there's also, actually, I have to trust. Tell me more about that, Nikki. I, I remember the buzzword at college was all about formation. Um, what changes has God wrought in you over the last three to four years in preparation for your ministry? I think mainly that it's been a stripping away. 
I have a natural tendency to seek approval and to seek affirmation from those around me, to be a people pleaser. And I think my journey during college time has been about learning to trust in God, to go to God to, to affirm who I am, to let me know who I am in him. And while it is okay for people to affirm and encourage you, actually my trust needs to be in God and actually in him alone. And it's been a very valuable lesson and one I'm going to carry on looking into and developing in the years ahead, I'm sure. Thank you. And so today, as you start your curacy, how do you want God to minister in and through you? Well, Janice, all we seem to be hearing in the news at the moment is bad news. Um, I just want to be able to share the good news of Christ with all of those that I meet and come into contact with. God has blessed me with so much love, so much joy, so much peace, that I want to be able to share that with those that I work in my community and also with the people that I work with, so that they too can pass on the love, joy and peace of Christ so that all of us can live together in the flow of God's love. Oh, thank you, Nikki. That's great. Now, finally, last question. Um, is there anything that the church family can do for you? Yes, Janice, they can pray. I really would appreciate prayer. But being more specific, if people could pray that my roots will continue to go deep into God so that I will get all the nutrients and everything that I need to grow to be all that God has called me to be. And even though I'm certain about my call to ordain ministry, actually what that's going to look like in the future is up to God. So maybe I need prayer as well for wisdom and discernment in what that's going to look like and how I walk out in that. And I think as well that I will continue to trust and grow in trust in love for God and that I will be, have ears to hear what God is telling me to do. But I think more importantly that I'll have the courage to do it. Thank you, Nikki.